Hey y'all, God bless you all. So this won't be a super long video, but I know this is something that the Lord wants me to get on here and talk about. I keep feeling this prompting, this pulling, so here I am. But first, let me just pray for us. Oh, Holy Spirit, we love you, we need you, we want you. Oh, Holy Spirit, may your presence be felt among us now, God. May every word that I speak be pleasing to you. May I speak nothing of my own flesh, God. And may all ears be open to hear. And may this message reach exactly who it is intended to reach. And may the intercessors who need to pray, may they pray, God. May we rise up and pray. God says, intercessors arise and pray in Jesus' name. God, I pray blessings over the one watching this health, God. I pray your will, clarity. You are not the author of confusion and you do not give us a spirit of fear. So God, I pray you bless them and strengthen them in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So like I said, this video isn't going to be really long. Um, so I want to talk for just a moment about my generation, the generation below me, um, and the generations that are to come. Okay. If Jesus doesn't come back very soon, praying that he does. <laughs> But anyways, so we know on these college campuses, there are right, or what's the right, there are protests, I'm sorry, there are protests that are going on. Um, and I think that in some situations, they're coming from a place that is intended as a good heart, like it's coming from a, a good heart is what's being believed. But I Googled something. Let me pull it up and read it to you real quick. Actually, I'm not even going to read it. I'm just going to summarize it for you, okay? A lot of the people who are protesting Israel and they are hollering free Palestine, free Palestine, and they're seeing Israel as the problem, Israel, Israel as the terrorist, um, and eliminating them as the solution and having, having open borders as the solution. Um, we just, if we let everyone in, you know, then we'll have that peace that we're looking for guys. That's a false sense of peace. Okay. Now, when I Googled what would happen if an American who practices homosexuality or is the LGBT, ABC, D community, if they were into those things, what would happen to them if they were to live under the Islamic law? Um, I can't quote, quote the Quran, but it is very frowned upon. And the freedom and the peace that you think that, you, that we will have dwelling together in these different religions, this melting pot, that's not at all how it's going to go. We are America, one nation under God. And I'm not saying that that anyone who has a, a Muslim background can't live here. Well, heck no. There, there are Christians all over the world. There are believers in Jesus. But the Bible talks about being turned over to a strong delusion. And that's what happens um, when we look at these terrorist groups, when we look at people who follow Muhammad, um, another thing I Googled, let me just pull it up real quick. How many young girls did Muhammad marry? Now, um, it talks about the youngest and there's some debate whether she was six or seven. Others say that the marriage didn't actually happen until she was nine. Either way, that's absolutely disgusting and not of God in Jesus name. Um, and some say that they didn't consummate the marriage until much later, but either way, he married a child that's pedophilia, which now, as we know, that is becoming legal. I, I don't believe it's legal yet, uh, but it's, it's not frowned upon by a group of people. And that group of people is growing. And some of them are even Christians. And I know some personally, and it grieves the heart of God. Oh, and it grieves the Holy Spirit so much. And we've got to open our eyes and take the blinders off and not be one of those turned over to a strong delusion, not be one of those who is controlled by our flesh, not be one of those glory to God who walks by our own limited understanding. But we realize that his ways truly are higher. His ways truly are greater. And if we can just follow in his path, we will stumble. We will fall. We will venture off because shiny things will catch our attention. But you know what? That's okay. Grace grows. Grace, as my pastor says, his grace covers us, but we can not. Okay, so my phone died and then it took forever to come back on because I had to get up to 5%. So 
I'm going to write down, or I'm going to read what I wrote down. So I was saying we cannot afford to take our eyes off of Jesus. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus, okay? If, if you're not a Christian who's watching this, then think, how can I help my neighbor? And how can I learn to trust them again? Look, I feel like since COVID and since so many other things that have happened in the world, and especially with politics, which I don't even get into that much, but the world is so lacking in the area of knowing who they can trust. If you're a Christian, pray for discernment. If you're not, I pray that you would become one in Jesus name, because Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And what do you have to lose? You know, like, what do you have to lose? It's worth it. I promise. Okay. Anyways. So, um, like I said, if you're not a Christian, then how can you help your neighbor? And how can we all learn to trust again? And not just compromise for a false sense or idea of peace. Because it's not the true peace. Only Jesus Christ can offer the true peace. Some of you don't even know what you're asking for. Let me explain. How will opening or tearing down the walls and allowing even the worst of the worst, which America already has plenty of, how will that help any at all? It won't. We must unite as a people under God, as victorious conquering people groups that Oh Lord, I'm messing this up. Help me, Jesus. So we must unite as a people under God, as victorious, conquering people groups. Have done successfully since ancient times. Yes, so me, I'm sorry guys. I just wrote, wrote this down really quick when my phone died. Um, I should have read over it first. So we must learn to unite as a people, okay? As a people under God, as victorious, conquering people groups have done successfully since ancient times. It's proven to work. When you serve the one true living God, Yahweh, it is proven to work. You will be, as Psalm 91 says, hidden under the shadow of the Almighty. Those promises are for you, remnant of God. Jesus. So God is looking for such a people and we must also protect our eyes and our ears. Listen, listen, listen. Some of you need to hear this. We must also protect our eyes and our ears. So out of our mouth flows goodness. We cannot compromise and indulge in the worldly vile things. The rest of the world does. We must set our minds, hearts, eyes, on the things above, not temporary, unsatisfying, worthless things. Jesus, he is the only way. So hold on, I got a little scripture. And you know, the Bible also talks about turning them over to a strong delusion. I'm not sure if before the phone died, if I read that or talked about that or not, but many are turned over to a strong delusion. Many. One, all other religions other than true Christianity. There are false forms of Christianity. But this Palestinian, Muslim, and this comes not from a place of judgment, but a place of spiritual understanding. It's demonic. It's an idol. And it's not the way. And it's never going to be the answer. And it's not going to be what you're looking for. That hole that's inside of you, God, I hope, God, I hope whoever you want to hear this is listening. I know they are in Jesus' name. Listen, that hole that you're looking to fill, only Jesus Christ can fill it. I had that same hole. I can easily get that same hole again if I take my eyes off of him. He has to sit on the throne of our heart. He is everything. So I said I had some scripture. Um, I had a lot, but I just went with just with one, two, okay? Colossians 2. So, in, you know, in the beginning, God, um, in the beginning, it talks about, you know, I say this in order so that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. But if we go on down to verse 6, therefore, 
as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Listen to this part. Verse 8, see to it that no one takes you captive. I really like that translation. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and the empty deceit according to human traditions, according to the elemental spirits of the world, the elemental spirits of the world, not according to Christ. For in Christ, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. So that's saying Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. In Islam, they don't believe this. Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man. If he wasn't, then his sacrifice would have meant nothing. His death on the cross would have meant nothing. Because it had to be a perfect spotless lamb. And only he is that. That's why he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why he is the word of God. That's why he is the anointed and chosen one. So it goes on to say, verse 10. Let me go back to verse 9. For in Jesus, in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled with him, if you are a Christian, <laughs> who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with Christ in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses, in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made us alive together with him, having forgiven all of our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. With its legal demands. There's always consequences for sin. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. What does that mean? Jesus was nailed to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities, and he put them to open shame by triumphing over him. And I would love to just keep going, but I told you this wouldn't be long, and it's already pretty long. So, I have one more verse for you. Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 16 says, God says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Intercessors, God is saying right now, arise and pray. If you don't consider yourself an intercessor, everyone's supposed to pray. So pray for your country, pray for your nation, pray for the peace of Israel, pray for the whole Middle East, pray for this entire world and pray that Jesus Christ will save us from tribulation. The Bible tells us to pray for that. If you don't know that, I have a video on it. So I got to go. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thanks for watching.